Hey, what's going on guys? Deanna from ModBot here. And in today's video, we are going to be reviewing this printer right here. This is the Bebo Touch Dual Extrusion 3D Printer. I've been using it for the last month or so here, and it's about time to give some feedback on this printer. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I've had my eyes on this 3D printer for quite a while now. I've actually looked at it a few times over the last year. If you look on Amazon under 3D printers, uh, this machine almost always comes up at some point down the list. And um, at $850 roughly, it always kind of intrigued me because one, it's not a kit printer, two, it's fully enclosed, three, it's dual extrusion, and four, it even has some of the nice features that you'd expect on a higher end machine like a touch screen, filament runout sensor, power resume functionality. It even has a little laser uh, engraving add-on, which isn't something I was really interested in, but still thought, hey, it's a cool bonus to throw in. So one thing that really surprised me about this printer right off the bat was considering how low cost it was for what it offered and how many and positive reviews it had on Amazon, there was really little content out there on there. Like on YouTube, I couldn't find any really, really good videos on it. Um, and that kind of surprised me, which initially almost led me to believe that those reviews might not have been legitimate. Um, although I typically take reviews on Amazon with a grain of salt, uh, considering there was over 200, it kind of felt difficult for me for them to all be flopped. So I was intrigued and I was really excited after reaching out to Bebo and they uh, agreed to send me this machine. I was really excited to kind of come to my own conclusion and see whether all of the hype and all of the feedback that people had been giving the machine were, uh, in my opinion, accurate. So the machine came in a relatively large package, um, nothing too big, but I mean, you see the size of the machine here. Uh, and it came with a few extra things, a couple replacement parts. It came with a full kilogram of PLA plastic, which is always really nice. Um, and it was a really simple setup to get this up and running. Um, I took it out of the box, the extruder, and the hot end setup had to be bolted in place, which was really easy to do. Uh, there was basically like a one, two sheet um, kind of quick start guide that the machine came with. Um, I cut some of the zip ties, took out some of the packaging material, and the only thing that really required some assembly, which wasn't too difficult, was this little top acrylic enclosure here. And on the two-sided piece of paper that came with the machine. It didn't tell you how to assemble it, so I was hoping that potentially on the SD card there would be some further instructions on how to assemble it. I mean, there's not too many parts. I'm sure I could have figured it out, but still, like, I would like to have some instructions on how to assemble it. So, I took the SD card, I popped it into my computer, and this is where I was really, really surprised. Um, most companies that I deal with, they have uh, to me, not enough information on their, on their printer, like uh, whether there's not enough assembly instructions or there's not enough uh, as far as slicing instructions. Well, Bebo did a absolute kick-ass job on this. Um, there was videos on how to assemble this. There was videos on how to put together all the parts that you would need to put together on the actual printer itself, like the door and the extruder setup. There was Simplify 3D profiles, Kira profiles, uh, Repetier profiles, there were test G-code, there were like a huge PDF like archive of various issues. So like if this is happening with your machine, click here and all different ways of how to fix it, which um, I only ended up using a small amount of the things that were on that SD card. So like the Kira profile I used as well as the video on how to put this together, but having that much information and it was organized nicely into folders to me is kick-ass. I would always much rather have more information than have to search on the web to find it. So that was a huge thumbs up on my end and I thought that, uh, again, people did a really good job with making sure you've got everything you need from the get-go. So once I leveled this machine, which is two screws in the front, one screw in the back, and uh, had everything up and going, I went ahead and hopped over to Cura. I sliced this Terminator T800 skull and loaded it up and started the print. It was a pretty long print. Normally I do a smaller test print, but for some reason with this printer, I kind of just said, let's just go hard and, and do a large print from the get-go. And so I let that print run. I was here watching a movie or watching something on, on TV and I let it go for a few hours, saw everything was looking good. So I went to bed and then the next morning I came up and overall I was really happy with the way the Terminator skull turned out. There was some slight imperfections, like there was a 
a part on the side of the skull that had fallen over, another part that was completely just messed up. But I took a look at the G-code after the fact and kind of determined that it was more my settings and the G-code output that caused the error, not the actual hardware itself. Uh, but either way, all in all, I was really happy with um, the way that that turned out for being such a large print right away uh, off the bat. So. Once I was done with that one, I did another print uh, out of the same PLA. It was called the Three Wise Skulls, which is a really awesome print that uh, I've seen quite a few people do and I've been wanting to do. It's like the three skulls stacked on top of each other with one covering his mouth, ears and eyes for like the see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Um, it's a really sick model. Uh, I, I want to do another one actually even bigger, uh, but it turned out absolutely just great. Uh, so I was happy with that and then I decided, okay, let's do some dual extrusion 3D printing. So I popped in another spool of PLA and I went to print out a dual color octopus that I found on Thingiverse that I thought was a super cool model. Um, so I went ahead, sliced it up. Uh, I did, I believe on that one, a purge tower and not a ooze shield. I definitely did a purge tower, not an ooze shield on that one. Uh, and so I started up the print, the first layer looked great. I went away for some hours, came back and it did not work out well. Um, so the, uh, I believe it was the purple filament that I had was incredibly brittle. Uh, it's been open for a really long time. And so um, from it sitting in the little Bowden guide tube for a while, it actually had broken off after the first couple layers that I had seen. So it just wasn't able to feed at all for the rest of the job. So only one of the filaments actually completed. So again, I, I wouldn't say that's a, a, a machine thing. That was definitely a my filament thing. Um, so I went ahead and reloaded the filament, restarted the job and walked away for a couple hours, came back and this time it had been looking good for about half the print and then just stopped. And there was actually a temperature error on the screen and I was thinking to myself like, that's definitely not a good thing. So um, I turned it off, restarted it a few times and saw that no matter what I did now, that second, um, the second extruder, the second hot end, I, it wouldn't heat up at all. It was just completely staying uh, at room temperature. So the thermistor was working. I could see it slightly variating, uh, like uh, slightly going up and down. Um, but the temperature, I just could not get it to heat up. And so um, after doing a little bit of kind of just troubleshooting, I determined that the heater cartridge was dead. Um, so I reached out to Bebo and um, within a matter of hours, which is insane for a Chinese company, usually it's like a day or two response. Seriously, hours, he had responded back to me, um, uh, Braden from Bebo, basically apologizing and saying, hey, like, you know, here's some things you can do to troubleshoot it, make sure that the wires are, you know, indeed into the connectors on the board which I'd already done all that stuff prior to. I knew in my head that it was, you know, it was no good, but luckily um, they include an extra heater cartridge with the machine. It doesn't excuse it. It was really unfortunate. Um, Braden told me that they had an issue with their supplier for a little while on those heater cartridges and have since changed. You know, it's, you could take that with a grain of salt, but regardless, it came with a second one, which I then just popped in, undid the first one, kind of cleaned up the cables again so it looked nice and it was, off to the races after that. And that time it turned out wonderful. The, the print completed without any issues. And since then, I will say that I have not had any issues with either of the extruders. They've been working flawlessly for the rest of my printing time. So uh, I was really happy with that end result. So then I swapped over to some ABS printing. Uh, I did a little ABS wrench and a little uh, ABS clip um, that both turned out awesome. The wrench was super cool actually, it's an adjustable wrench and it took a little bit of time to break it in but now that I did it, it actually adjusts like up and down and it's crazy because it prints in place and once it's done printing you have to snap off some of the support material that's kind of holding it um, together and then it'll slowly start to uh, st slowly start to work out and that was that was uh, really really a fun print actually. Um, so uh, yeah, and then once I was done with that, this is also a, it's a direct drive system and compared to the uh, Wido F192 that I uh, reviewed a few weeks back, this one has a much finer path to travel between the extruder and the hot end. So I was confident in my head like that maybe I could do this crazy flexible TPE I've been holding on to. So I loaded it up with a file from uh, Thingiverse that was just a cover for my uh, iPhone and I started the print. The first layer was looking great and then it clogged and I tried it a few times and I'm not saying that 
with enough trial and error, it could not print that material, but it definitely was not printing it very effectively from my testing. So I, I basically scrapped it. I, I would say from, from my experience with this machine, you could definitely do like semi flexes, like soft PLA or some TPUs, but the, that blue stuff I have is almost like Ninja Flex. I would say you'd still have a pretty tough time doing Ninja Flex on this machine without maybe uh, some serious tweaking of it. But um, I, I digress. So uh, around that time, I actually received this guy right here, which I don't know how well you can see it in the frame, but this is the Palette 2. So obviously I was super excited to test this out and I went ahead and mounted the little Palette 2's arm onto here and started running some prints. I did a four colored chameleon, uh, which was a pretty long print. I think all in all, it was something like 16 to 20 hours and um, it turned out awesome. I was so excited. I actually had Erin send me a photo at work because I knew she was going to be home from work before me and that it would have completed. So I, when I got the photo, I was like, yes, I cannot wait to get home and, and see this guy. Um, so that turned out awesome. And then I did a, a random spliced um, um, vase. Uh, which was like a uh, succulent vase uh, or planter type thing and uh, that also turned out super cool So I'm really really excited to test out the palette some more, but uh, yeah, it was really easy to get it to connect to this machine I took off the little top um, part of like the uh, extruder housing and just mounted with the double-sided adhesive um, the I don't know Bowden tube from this guy to this machine and it did an awesome job. So overall this machine has been awesome. I also did test out the laser engraver module because although I didn't care about it at first, after a while I was thinking like, I haven't played with too many lasers. It sounds kind of cool. So um, swapping out to the laser head was really easy. You just unscrew two screws. You plug the fan cable into the laser and that is what actually controls this. Uh, and then you download Inkscape, which is a free open source, uh, I believe open source, but definitely a free software. Uh, and they have a included Bebo uh, G-code uh, plugin for it that's included on the micro SD card. So you download that, install that, which it guides you through all of that, which again was awesome. And then I just downloaded a few vectors that I found on Google and I was able to engrave uh, very quickly uh, some plywood I had laying around and some black acrylic, which I wish I had a lighter acrylic because I think that it would look a lot cooler, but you could at least see it in the reflection. And uh, overall, it did a damn good job. It was really easy. I'm sure, again, I don't have really any experience using lasers other than a tiny little one that I reviewed from Banggood some years ago. Um, so I was for, I was impressed because again, like to me, this is a 3D printer. I got it for 3D printing capabilities and the ability to do ABS. And if I want to do some dual extrusion, to do dual extrusion. Um, but having that as a bonus, like not upset, I will say to be careful, you know, if using a laser, like they do include some glasses, which are down here. I have no idea whether these are actually rated appropriately. Um, there's also this red shield on top, which is you're supposed to be able to look through, but Still, when you're using lasers, be careful. Um, you can really damage your eyes and you also want to have proper ventilation or filtration for uh, the fumes that are going to be coming off of that. So that's a whole nother side topic that uh, I won't get into in this video. But yeah, all in all, my time with the Bebo has been awesome. Um, the fact that it's you know basically ready to rock and roll, fully enclosed, has a nice touch screen. It's got power resume functionality. It's got uh, both of the extruders have filament runout guides to it. Um, it is a really, really awesome printer. If I mean, seriously, if you're looking to get a starter printer or if you're looking to upgrade uh, or add something to like your Creality lineup, but you want something that's enclosed and you don't want to deal with enclosing one of these machines, you just want one that's ready to go. Um, it also is able to get up to 270 Celsius on the hot end, which means that you can do nylons with it, which is sick. You don't have to actually upgrade the hot ends and it's direct drive, which is super, to me, awesome. Like, I mean, I, I love my Bowden printers and there's nothing wrong with a Bowden printer, but it's nice having the option of, you know, a Bowden printer and a direct drive printer. And certainly with the dual, you don't have to use the dual, but this guy's even got um, two layer cooling fans. There's one on the front, there's one on the back. So uh, I think Bebo did a really, really good job with this for 850 bucks. Again, um, I think that it is 
an extremely good value and kind of hard to at least not take a look at this machine if you're looking, uh, you know, to get into something that's in this price point. So um, I will place a link in the comments down below. And if there's any other questions you guys have that I did not answer, please let me know as well. And I will do my best to answer them. I hope you guys are all doing awesome. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace guys.